Filter effects are a very popular part of Photoshop, and they've been with Photoshop since the very beginning. There are more filters in Photoshop than there ever have been, so I thought I'd take you on a quick walk through the ones you absolutely need to know about for your playbook, some that aren't as relevant as they used to be, some tips and tricks to ones you may have discarded, and just some general things you ought to know about using filter effects on your images. Let's take a look. Okay, so let's take a look at the filter menu, and we can see that there's all sorts of different controls here. And the way that they're organized is that you have these sort of separate worlds up here at the beginning. And most of those require an episode entirely of their own. Uh, so I really want to focus on some of the ones down below. But before I do, let's talk about filter gallery, which you notice is grayed out here. Some of these filters are only available if we're in 8-bit mode. So as soon as I change to that, we'll notice that filter gallery is available to me. Now, before we even go in there, you're probably thinking, why are you showing me something that's so old? Um, chances are you use Filter Gallery once, and you realize it's kind of a played out look. Well, the key to making it work is blend modes. So if I duplicate the layer first, and then come into Filter Gallery, I can see that all of these different effects are going to be a lot more interesting when I play around with blend modes. Now, let's not talk about any of these color ones. Let's talk about some of these down here, which are really interesting, except you may have noticed they're black and white. So I actually like this effect, but I don't like that it's black and white. So what we want to do here is apply that and then choose one of our blend modes. So soft light will work really well there. Let's zoom in and just look at before and after. Before and after. I've got the effect, but I still have the color. And if I want, I can play around with the opacity to adjust the effect. So that's a great way to use Filter Gallery and make it look a little different. Okay, let's look at some of the others. So continuing down the filter menu, one that you really ought to know about is Gaussian Blur. And this is most useful when using masks. So let's say I want to just quickly change the color or the mood of the sky. I can make a selection of that, and then if I choose, say, Curves, you'll notice we've automatically added a mask. Now I'm going to do something pretty extreme, just so we can see the edges of it. Let's really change that quite a bit. All right, not super believable because we can see a hard line there. But if with that mask selected, I come up here to Blur and Gaussian Blur, now I'm blurring the mask. And if you look at the horizon line, you can see what's happening there. No blur, lots of blur and everywhere in between. It's one of those filters I use all the time, and I think you'll find you use it all the time, too. Okay, moving down, Blur Gallery gives you all sorts of really powerful hardware-accelerated filters. These are only available CC and later, but if you haven't played around with this, it's a great example of a new feature that's really easy to use. I'll just show you one of these. Iris Blur is my favorite. It's great for synthesizing a shallow depth of field. What I do is just drop the pin where I want focus, I stretch this out, and now I've got a nice shallow depth of field. If I hit M, I can see that I'm even creating a mask as I'm in here. These are really fun, they're really interactive, and they're really easy to use. Continuing down, you'll notice that the Distort menu gives you all sorts of really cool effects. The thing that I'd like to show you here that I find that I use a lot more often is Transform. So if I hit Command A, I'm going to select my whole image. If I hit Command T, I'm going to come into my transform mode, and I'll notice there's this little button up here on the horizontal option bar that allows me to go into warp mode. Now this is really cool because I can peel away the corners, I can choose all of these custom warps, all of these different effects. I find that this is a lot more interactive than the old filters. Uh, there's a little bit of overlap there in that they solve some of the same problems, but I think you'll find that transforming your image uh, it gives you a little bit more control, and it's actually a little bit easier to use. So I recommend that workflow over the filter there. Now, with noise, this is an important one. When it comes to add noise or reduce noise, I'm going to recommend you go into Camera Raw. You can pass your non-RAW files into Camera Raw by changing your file preference, or if you're in CC or later, you can just bounce right in. And so what we want to do here is pop over to Effects. And if we want to add grain, it's as simple is just throwing grain in. A quick note about grain. I can add grain to give it that film look, but where this is really useful 
is for compositing. If you have two images you want to piece together and you want them to look really natural, adding a little bit of grain, actually introducing some artifacts, will harmonize the two images. It works really, really well. And of course, when it comes to noise reduction, while this image doesn't have a lot of noise, you definitely want to do that in Camera Raw. Moving down the list here, the one other thing I want to make sure that I call out is the Sharpen submenu. There are a lot of different ways to sharpen in Photoshop. There is exactly one great way to sharpen, and that's Smart Sharpen. I know that Unsharp Mask has a funny name, and you've probably heard about it, and some of these others are quick, but Smart Sharpen is the most powerful. Now, in order to get the most out of this particular filter, you want to make sure you're using it as a smart filter. Smart filter, smart sharpen. And to do that, we're going to come back up here to convert for smart filters. It's essentially a filter layer. It's going to allow us to change the filter after the fact. And sharpening is a great example of something you might want to change later. So with sharpening, you always want to be looking at things at 100%, and you always want to make sure you look at the area where you focused. So in this image, I focus in the foreground. So I place that little box there, and the sharpening is turned way, way up. So I want to pull that down. I want to pull the radius down, and I can click on the preview and hold to see before and after. Before and after. If I wanted, if there was noise, I could even reduce that. I could save a preset so I don't have to do the same thing time and again. I could even combat artifacts in the shadows and highlights. This is the place to sharpen. When I'm ready, I click OK. And if I ever want to change the parameters, I just double click on Smart Sharpen there. So that's a whole bunch of information about a whole bunch of different filters, but hopefully you've learned a few things that you didn't know before and some tips and tricks on where to go and where not to go when using filters in Photoshop.